Initially, when I came across a study in regard to vitamin D being correlated with multiple sclerosis, I said, oh, ho hum, another redundant vitamin D MS uh, research article. However, looking into the depth of the article itself is actually quite amazing. Not so much even the results, but as far as leading to more questions. And you'll understand exactly what I mean in a second. In the research titled, taking a high dose of vitamin D may benefit people with multiple sclerosis. Now keep in mind, the next paragraph I'm gonna read is a quote from the study and it's their words, not me interpreting it. And also before I begin too, even though they're saying it's perfectly safe, it's just better to work with a medical professional. The more people help you helping you out, knowing if you're on the right, tra right track or not, is, is, is a plus. So let us begin. Taking a high dose, remember their words, of vitamin D3 is safe for people with multiple sclerosis and may correct the body's hyperactive immune response according to a study published in the December 30th, 2015 online issue of Neurology. Now, in this study itself, they're gonna look at what's called interleukin-17. Now, this could play a huge role in Crohn's disease, psoriasis, you name it, a ton of different disorders which are related to interleukin-17 being elevated. So let us begin. For the study, 40 people were with relapse or remitting MS received either 10,400 IUs, sounds like a big number, but let's put it this way, 10,400, and vitamin D, so tell, let's just say 10,000. 10,000 is actually, I use vitamin D is 250 micrograms, uh, 0.25 milligrams. So if you really, you, you could barely put that on the head of a pin. It's, it's virtually not visible, per se. Or, even less, 800 IUs of vitamin D3, D3 supplements per day for six months. The current recommended daily allowance of vitamin D3 is 600 IUs, which in case of people with these type of disorders is quite telling. Blood tests at the start of the study and again at three and six months measured the amount of vitamin D in the blood and the response in the immune system's T cells, which play a key role in MS. Now, this is interesting part. This is where you start to ask some questions. The people taking the high dose had a reduction in the percentage of T cells related to MS activity, high dose being 10,400 IUs. When the increase in vitamin D in the blood was greater than 18 nanograms per milliliter, every five nanogram per milliliter increase in vitamin D led to a 1% decrease in the percentage of interleukin 17 uh, T cells in the blood. Now keep in mind, they would like to see people in the 50 nanogram range, so if you're looking at 50 nanograms minus 18, 32, uh, you know, if they get to that level, they're noticing they'll probably have about a 6.4% drop in interleukin-17 levels uh, in, in T cells in the blood. But to proceed, the people, the people, the people taking the low dose did not have any changes in the T cells, meaning the 800 IUs, which is still 200 IUs above the RDA, still did nothing at least when it came to interleukin-17. So, vitamin D levels above 30 nanograms per milliliter are considered sufficient for the general population. Now, you, that's where you have to ask a lot of questions in regard to what is a vitamin. If a vitamin can alleviate a disease-related symptom per se, does that mean it's actually malnutrition? Or are you trying to say the vitamin is op operating like a drug? Well, if your vitamin levels are low and your disease is manifest, I'll leave that for you to decide. Vitamin D levels above 30 nanograms per milliliter are considered sufficient for the general population, but researchers noted that for people with MS, it may be that levels above 50 nanograms per milliliter are necessary to reduce disease activity. The group taking a low dose did not reach this target, which also brings up another question, what the heck is happening to the vitamin D and why aren't the levels getting into sufficient range, especially at 800 IUs? There's something going on with vitamin D metabolism is not being converted over to calcitriol, which is another point too. I, would, I regret the study did not measure the calcitriol levels in the blood, and if it did, it didn't mention it in the initial press release. It would be nice to know. Also, you hear 10,400 IUs, and I know the media scared people to death, saying side effects, blah, 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 this and that, and hypercalcemia. But according to the research, this is what they said. Side effects from the vitamin supplements were minor and were no different between the people taking the high dose and the people taking the low dose. 10,400 IUs, 800 IUs, made no difference. They both had the same side effects, which were minor. Again, I hope this helps. Work with your medical professional before going on any sort of medical program such as this. However, extremely promising. In my eyes, definitely worth a shot to talk over 
with your medical consultant per se. Again, this is Ralph Turchano. I really hope this helps. And thank you very much for listening once again.